Hello my friends, welcome to Keswick Chapel, the true I'm Pastor Arbor. This is day two of week 49. Today we're looking at the way of Jesus as the way of salvation. In our passage, Zacchaeus has this encounter, this personal encounter with Jesus. And the encounter is such that Zacchaeus is immediately changed. How do we know this? Because he jumps up and he says, Look, Lord, right now I give half of all my possessions to the poor. And for anyone that I've cheated, I will return to them four times that amount. A radical encounter. He was changed. And Jesus declares that salvation has come to his house. We just talked a couple of weeks ago about the ten lepers that Jesus sent to go show themselves to the priest and how one of the lepers, a Samaritan, on his way discovers that he's been cleansed and he doesn't proceed to the priest, rather he turns around and he goes back to Jesus and he falls on his knees praising God and thanking Jesus for his healing. And Jesus tells him too that his faith has made him well. And he's to go on his way. Another radical change. How about one that you may or may not be familiar with, and that is Saul of Tarsus. He was a great persecutor of the church. He was a Pharisee. He was on his way to Damascus to round up more of people, of more followers of Jesus. They were called the way then. They weren't yet called Christians. So he was looking for followers of the way, and he was persecuting them. We can read his conversion story in Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 25. But what we learn is that he's on his way, and he's struck by this brilliant light. And Jesus speaks to him, and he says, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And Saul says, who are you, Lord? He said, I am the one you are persecuting. And Saul fell to his knees, and he was blinded. Jesus gave him instructions to go on into Damascus, and there he was to wait. So he waited three days, and then Ananias shows up because the Lord spoke to Ananias and told him, Saul is at this house. Go and see him. Pray over him that he may regain his sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So Ananias did as he was told. Paul received his sight, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And they took him out, and he was baptized. And then Saul becomes the champion of the gospel, the champion of the good news of Jesus Christ. And later, in chapter 13, you'll read that he was in Cyprus, and there we discover that he's also called Paul. So he was radically changed, impacted forever because of a personal encounter with Jesus Christ. Well, how about the lady in Luke chapter 7, verses 36 through 50, who was a sinful woman. She heard that Jesus was at the house of a Pharisee. And she goes in, and she falls to her knees, and she begins kissing Jesus' feet. And as she does, she's crying. And she uses her tears and her hair to wash Jesus' feet. And then she pours perfume over his feet as an anointing. And Jesus, in a conversation with the Pharisee, draws a little parable, a little question for the Pharisee. But when he's done, he looks at this lady and he says, your sins are forgiven. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Another direct personal encounter with Jesus Christ that radically changes a life. We've had these four sto short stories that I've just shared with you. Each and every individual, a personal encounter with Jesus Christ has radically changed their lives. We know that the way of Jesus is the way of salvation. All four of these folks were saved from the life that they had been living. Let me ask you, do you know Jesus and his way of salvation? Have you had a personal encounter with Jesus Christ? Well, I have great news for you. You can right now. 
All you do, all you have to do is choose to believe and follow Jesus. Accept that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus Christ came to save you from your sins. Believe that God raised him from the dead after he was crucified and shed his blood for us. And then confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart and you will be saved. The question is, which way are you choosing? Are you choosing your own way or are you choosing the way of Jesus? I pray that as you consider these things, my friends, that you will ask the Holy Spirit to give you eyes to see and ears to hear. That you'll have a receptive heart of mind to receive these truths then have the boldness and the courage of Jesus Christ himself to make the changes in your life that you need to make. I pray you'll have a wonderful day, my friends. Go in the peace of God. Blessings to you. Bye for now.